How are you? Hello and welcome back to Six of One and Half a Dozen of the Other. I'm Rachel and I'm here with Greg Clifford, Jeff Finan, also known as the Poet Jeff, and Emmett O'Brien. And we are here to talk about this week's thought experiment. But first, um, I'm just going to ask you all guys, um, so I'm quarantined here in Stony Water in Dublin, um, and I've been listening to lots of music to pass the time. So what have you all been listening to this week? Listening to me own tunes, actually. Your own stuff? Oh, Jesus. We were listening yeah, I don't, I don't mean, I mean, I don't mean to be vain, just it comes so naturally. No, why I've been listening to my, <laughs> why I'm listening to my own stuff is because my album has, been, I finalised the mixes, I just got sent the masters last night. So I'm just listening to make sure that it's the right kind of tone and all that. So uh, yeah, that's what I've been listening to. Apart from that, um, I suppose Radiohead. Brother Emmett's favourite band. Yeah, that's my buzz. My own stuff on Radiohead. Good stuff, Jeff. Fell on deaf ears like Radiohead's music. Go on, Rachel. It's on to me. I, um, I've been listening to uh, Run the Jewels a lot this week, the new, new song, uh, Ooh La La. Uh, I actually got a sneak peek of some of Greg's stuff as well, which was fantastic. Um, and what, then I went really far back. I was listening to like Lamb and uh, uh, Support His Head and going around kind of mid 90s bands too. Yeah, a little bit of bicep as well, just to get a bit of banging in there. Excellent. MS? Uh, yeah, well, I didn't get to hear any of Greg's new stuff, but it's all right. I let it go. You didn't uh, answer it. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I, um, I've listened to a couple of things. Listening to a lot of reggae, um, a lot of Damien Marley, a lot of Chronics, uh, a lot of Till then, heavy metal. I've been listening to a lot of Beatles, a lot of Jimi Hendrix, um, listening to a lot of Elton John. Just a mix. Like, yeah, play eclectic, like your personality. Uh, yeah, Lionel Richie as well, because I'm not going to be able to see him live now, so I'm just listening to his music. I- I saw him live a few years back. One of the best gigs I've ever had in my life. Loved it. Yeah, I was really looking forward to going to see him in July, but it's after getting called off. This is he be back. He tours incessantly. Absolute hero. Yeah, so I was supposed to see this band that I love called Rome, and I've been dying to see them for years, and um, and the singer in particular. And I had tickets to see uh, Rome twice, and obviously both of them are cancelled now. So maybe one day. So I've been listening to a lot of Rome and a lot of Aurora and Chelsea Wolf this week. Okay, so on to this week's thought experiment, which is called the Experience Machine, and it was designed by Robert Nozick. Um, and basically, the setup is this. So. Computers and uh, virtual reality and uh, psychological stimulations and simulations have come along so far that it is now possible to hook humans up to machines. And as part of this uh, machine, you can be hooked up and you can experience like the most pleasurable existence possible. So you have no pain, no negative experiences, and you cannot tell any difference between this, this simulated experience, this machine, and real life. Would you choose to be hooked up to the machine or would you choose to exist in, in reality? This, this was the theme of um, a Red Dwarf book. I can't remember the name I'm of it. I'm in the sky. Was... No, Red, you know Red Dwarf, that show that was on BBC Two? For years, yeah, yeah, it's on the Dave channel now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, the, but the actual the book that was, I think, it was the second book of the series, and they had this where the, the guys in it got um, hooked up to this machine, but their bodies were deteriorating the whole time. Yeah, uh, outside. Oh, yeah, so Willis film as well, uh, surrogate. Yeah, a man from Coronation Street was in that, wasn't he? <laughs> uh, Red Dwarf. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Charles, Charles something, wasn't it? I don't know, just now I'm a man hey, from Curry. Come here, one question before we go on. This machine, once you hook it, not that it's going to make any difference to my answer, but once you hook it up, you can't back out then. You're in there for the rest of your life, eh? Well, 
Well, it's it's about the decision. Like, what would you choose to? Yeah, I guess you're kind well, I mean, of in, reason, in it for the long term. The reason why I'm asking is who's going to pay for the electricity and the machine and all while I'm gone. It doesn't matter. It's like it's probably cheaper to keep you hooked up to the machine than it is to keep you in a house and make you have a job. You leave less of a footprint if you're actually in that machine, don't you? And the machine that you have, you, you have the idealistic world. So that means it's just your perfect world and you can't tell the difference between it's, what's it's that reality. It's completely pleasurable. There is no, like, no bad experiences. But I, I guess, um, I guess the question is, like, why would you, if you were hooked up to it, though, why would you ever want to come off it? Yeah, well, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I'd be hooking myself up to that and not leave. Because you'd be driven and demented with everything being perfect. Would you? Ah, fuck oh, off, absolutely. you present fuck. Absolutely, no way. being pessimistic whatsoever. There's what do you mean? Hang with life. I, 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 like, the struggle, the struggle is a joyous thing. Did you ever hear of the myth of Sisyphus? This is what I'm talking about the other night. I mean, like, if, you, if you're in a world where you can just say to yourself, it's like the, the thing, you, you die in a week, but you have what you want. It's yeah, that well, exact it's scenario, awesome. except yeah. I'm not doing any time soon. I'm hooking myself up to that. See, is that? I'll have a bowl of chicken <laughs> with them one hand. I'll have Dolly Parton when she was in her 20s on the other hand. I'll be fucking sore. <laughs> it's a bit like the Matrix, isn't it? Like, actually hooking yourself up to the Matrix. Mm-hmm. Like, and instead of like, what was it? They take the blue pill, you go down the rabbit hole, you take the red pill and you stay where you are, but you're actually doing it the opposite way around and taking the red pill and coming back out the rabbit, whatever the hell I'm trying to say, but you're, going, you're plugging yourself into the matrix so you don't have any, like it'd be fake, everything would be fake, you'd now be fake. And tell me this, right? Um, do you kind of dial in your life experiences or is it your subconscious that's directing your experiences when you're, when you're in this state? Oh, I don't know how the machine works. I just know how it <laughs> <does> work. <laughs> okay, well, I'm putting that to the floor. It would be, be kind of like you could be controlling yourself. Like, like lucid dreaming, akin to lucid dreaming. It would be like that. I, 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 yeah. I've never done it, but I'd say, like, I mean, this is a kind of question is, would you ever do heroin? You know what I mean? Like, I'm looking at No, no one knows what you mean. <laughs> nobody knows thanks for, for talking for everybody else. but I mean like that is seemingly ultimate pleasure so you could just become like hooked on gear and uh, no, although no, you're, you're hooking yourself to a machine you're not going on gear but I mean it's the same big it has the same effect it has the same pleasurable yeah. effect so. apart from you don't end up having to stroke people and end up destitute on the street yeah you're not yeah. going to be strung out off a of fucking like like yeah, fair enough, you'll be hooked on it. But, like, sitting in the machine three hours a day, like, that's not good. It's not going to, it doesn't have the same effect, per se. Day. As well, well, if you didn't want to come in. Sorry, Yeah, well, then I wouldn't come in. It wouldn't be three hours a day. <laughs> it's not like a flotation chamber. No, you're, you're hooked up to it. And then, like, I guess the assumption is that, you, like, either you'd want to come off for some reason. And, and the question is, like, what would that reason be? Yeah. And, um, or, or you say. Yeah, it's, it's like that Vanilla Sky film with Penelope Cruz and Tom Cruise, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I'll be putting Penelope Cruz in my simulation. <laughs> yeah. He's a bit of a yeah. Oh, yeah, she's a gem, all right. Yeah, she's all right. Look at you. <laughs> like, what are, like, do you think you would ever get kind of bored of that, though, Emmett? Like, or like the thrill of the chase? Well, I mean, this is... I just think it's a pretty straightforward thing. I mean, like, yeah, you could just not do it, but I mean, like, it's a win-win. Like, you hook yourself up, right, grand, yeah. Like, I'm just trying to think of it, like, the, the way that this, like, if I'm in this world and I just say, like, I'm walking down the street and I'm going to the shop and I say, is a love an extra tenner there to get a pack of smokes? And then I put my hand in my pocket and I have a tenner. Is that how it works? I guess oh, so. Yeah. It could do. It could do. And, then, and even at that, Emmett, at, at that, you'd, you'd put your hand in your pocket and you wouldn't even need to find a tenant. You'd just find smokes. Find the hourly grant. And then if I, if I say, Jesus, John played Blue Deadly, and I take it out and I light one up, uh, like, am I sitting there saying to myself, Jesus, this is a lovely smoke? Or am I saying to myself, well, this makes me want to get off the machine and have a smoke. Does it give me that feeling of having a smoke? Oh, you'd, feel, you'd definitely yeah, feel Yeah, yeah, it's exactly smoke. like you can't tell. Oh, yeah. 
You can't tell the difference. Yeah, hook me up then. All right, so if I hook myself up and I like it, then I'm then I'm then I'm sorted. If yeah. I hook myself up and I don't like it, then grand. I can just Yeah, but you're not in, you're not in like reality. It. So like the real people that aren't hooked up to the machine are still living out their lives on the outside. Well, are they, but they're still going to be in my simulation. They're still in yeah. your simulation, yeah, because yeah. you can dream. Yeah, yeah, so we can say to myself, I can say to myself, oh, Jesus, oh, I remember Blondie in the 70s. I'd love if Blondie in our prime was walking down Marino right now and said, hey, you're a bit of fucking something. I want to shut you a two meat and veg. So then I'd say to myself, yeah, sound. And then that's grand. But but if we don't want, like it, I you can You want leave. a shot of Debbie Harry's meat and veg? So we know she's the I also think you're you're making an assumption that like the machine is magic. As in like I'm not sure <coughs> that it can bring people back to the dead, but it can like it can make you believe that that person is there even though they're not. No, but you said that Sorry. I can have whatever I want. No, I said it, it's it's gonna give you every pleasure that you can like it it it's yeah, but I, pleasurable. But then I can say to myself, well, what pleasure do I want? Oh, I want Blondie, and then boom, comes she comes up. Yeah, or someone who looks like Blondie would not be able to do that. Yeah, see, I kind of think that the machine for it to actually function is kind of setting you in um like a, a lucid dream state, mm -hmm. um. So then, in, in which case, then you could actually conjure up anything I guess and convince yourself that it would exist because mm -hmm. I know myself I've, I've dabbled with lucid dreaming and you can feel the sensations you know you can feel your toes going into water and uh and movements and all that I know I didn't get to the point that I could fly or anything like that but I, I have a question to put to you right what what is the purpose of your life or, or the meaning of one's life is it to strive and endeavor towards happiness in which case, then, is that not a cop out? If you can just set yourself to happiness, are you not eliminating that wonderful, joyous journey to get there? I've thought about this a lot. Myself. Let me jump in here for a second. I think, like, happiness, happiness isn't a thing. Happiness only comes when the the rest of your life is fulfilled. So it's like, if say you were in the scenario of, oh, there's Blondie. I want her to come down to Marino, boy. Why Marino, I don't know, but say if you are th thinking of that, but like if you got everything you actually wanted, there would be no sense of achievement anymore and you become miserable. Yeah, I don't get this buzz. This has been a buzz the past few fucking weeks in this like sense of achievement. That, like if someone turned around to me and said, Hey, I mean, you don't deserve it because you've achieved fuck out with your life, but go play Wembley there. I'm not going to turn around and say, Nah, I want to work my way up. I'm just going to take it. No, but there would be a sense of achievement if you went to Wembley and people liked the art that you create on stage. How are you yeah, getting? Yeah, in my idea world, they will. Well, I think you're making yeah, an assumption it, about happiness that it is something that you attain and then you keep it. Like you can experience happiness and then it it's gone. You know, so oh, it's very fleeting. so it's Imagine not like you're process. like, oh, I've got, I've achieved everything I want to achieve in my life. Now I'm happy and I'll stay this way and I'm in Nirvana. Yeah, forever. you know, I've yeah. had this, I've had this buzz for a while, and it's like when Greg says, like, you know, when you think about the main and the life, and 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 it's to look for happiness. I just think that's overcomplicating things. That's I'm being completely honest. I don't, I don't think you need to overcomplicate. You're not put on this world to search for happiness and uh, like. You're just put in this world because that's just fucking evolution, mate. And there's nothing more behind. Like when I used to smoke a shitload of pot, I always thought that kind of stuff. And I would say, oh, geez, well, you know, like yeah, 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 want happiness, and 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 we are striving, and it has to be more to it. This is a little game of life. That's not what it is at all. Look, the only reason that you're here is just there's a one in a bazillion chance that a lot of fucking tadpoles became humans and then humans were riding humans and you were born. And that's all life is. And it's not this thing, it's a game. You know what I mean? Like, it's, you can't turn around and say God doesn't exist, but oh, the, you know what I mean? Like, everything moves in linear patterns and, and we're only living to find happiness and then you never find happiness because fuck off. You can find happiness and you can keep happiness. You just have to not be so in-depth about it. Like, if you are living in this world where everything you have, you can get it in a second, then of course you'll attain happiness. There's no reason why you can't. It's the same as superstars. Superstars. Are you trying to say that ignorance is bliss? 
Exactly. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Don't fucking question it. Just let it happen. So are you, are, are, by that same argument though, if we follow that down the line, then if you have the means and the money and the, the ability to obtain all of the things that give you pleasure, then your life is like, you know, com- complete basically. And you will never experience unhappiness again. Yeah, but in order for your life to be complete, you must foresee life as a game. You must force think that you need to complete life. You don't need to complete life. There's no such thing as completing life. You're just living life. Whether you live life with 10 million euro in your bank account or a tenner, n- neither of you are any closer to completing life because there is no completion of life. Life is just life. Well, there, there is a completion. Complete. When it's over, that's a, that's a completion. <laughs> yeah, well, in that sense, there is. But if you die, if you die with a tenner in your name, or if you die with a million in your name, it doesn't matter because you're still dead. If you die with twenty people around you, or one person around you, you're still dead. There's no completion of life. So no materialistic value can complete. In your life. No. in your simulation, you won't need any materialistic things or any sexual gratification. I'm not saying that. No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But what I'm trying to say is. That if you have, like, you're going to say to yourself, oh, yeah, I'll have money, I'll have, like, I'll have money, I'll have this, that, you know. But you don't want money to complete life. You want money to live. But you don't need it. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm in this alternate universe, I don't have to say, I want 10 grand, because I can say to myself, fuck it, I'll just rob that shot. It's actually not an alternate universe, because you're still on the exact same planet. Yeah. Yeah, well, I I think think I'm explaining that wrong. I'm not... You just said, you just said the only way to achieve happiness is to know that life is to realize that life is a game. So no, it, I said the only way that you achieve happiness is realizing that life isn't a game. There's no game, game in life. It's life. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Life isn't a game. You know what I mean? Look, I have a little, little poem a about a little cherry answer of a motto I know, and I say I ain't a player, baby, because life ain't my game. Film because it's not a game. It's it's life. But there are certain aspects that are, that are a game. You know, uh, when you're working your way up the ladder within a job, or there's certain arenas as well. Uh, anyway, we're, we're 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 digressing into semantics. I think yeah. right. Here's here's an, a, just a, another little thought. If we can control our simulation, mm-hmm. but then I suppose I could also inject some kind of suffering or some balance that there is a journey to get to um, whatever that goal is. That I've, that I I've, think that's I've not part of this machine's programming. It only, it's like one of those kind of bubble places where only positive, lovely, pleasurable things happen. But, but, but I, I think there's another question here though, Greg, and it's that if you're in a machine, your body is going to, your actual physical body is going to wither away and die quicker. So like, it's not going to be, if you're hooked up to anything, you're not doing any exercise, you're not getting any of the nutrients, uh, vitamins and, and nutrition that you need. So you're going to die sooner. <laughs> but like, like if you're not actually moving your body or doing anything, do hey, maybe the machine, really some of that for you. I, I do know what you mean though. Yeah, your body is actually deteriorating. So, so can it sustain this idyllic lifestyle? Yeah. I'd love to know more about what happens in the state, you know, is it minimizing opportunity, really? You know, is there only so many people you can see? Do you feel everything? I mean, if only lovely things happen, well, I, I can set myself some lovely tragedy too. And I don't mean that in a negative way, just so that I can actually appreciate and value the, 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 the achievements all that more. I would I want to that, inject some, uh, some struggle. I think that the tragedy would be that you would have to say goodbye to all your family and friends. They're never going to see you again. They'll see like, you the next day when you take the machine off. No, it would be in your subconscious, but your actual family and friends are just going to be seeing this like thing laid out, hooked up to a machine for the rest of your days. Yeah, but you can't live for other people, bro. So you're just going to just like be like, nah, ma, nah, da, I'm going into the machine. Look, I can't live here anymore. Fuck it, I'm gone. No, no, that's not what I'm saying at all. But I'm saying, I'll turn around to them and say, look, I'm going, in, I'm going into this machine for a year, lads. I'll see you later on. Yeah, grand. And then everyone's crying and that's terrible. But if I turn around and say, oh, yeah, I'm going to Australia for a year, that's all right. It's all well, the you, same. But you can, like, 
they call them and be in, in touch with them. Yeah, you can just take the machine off at seven o'clock at night, FaceTime them for a half an hour, and then say, "Wait, I'll talk to you." It's gonna work like that, Emma. Oh, yeah. like, it's like a, a 12 year old piece. <laughs> nah, lads, I, I think this is, I think, the, I, I think it's completely over. Like we said about 10 minutes ago, that if you didn't like it, you could take it off. I mean, you could take it off whenever you want. It's only a machine. There's no, like, you, I want, I'm not signing the contract. Well, why would you want, but the thing is, why would you want to? Like, if you have to choose between the machine and reality, and you're saying, I would like to go back to reality, you're choosing reality over the machine. So why is it that you're choosing to go back to reality and not stay hooked to the machine? No, I'm not choosing to go back to reality. I'm choosing to stay in there. I'm just talking about people who are talking about their family and all. I'm not talking about myself. I'm just answering Jeff's question. So you, like, there's, nothing, I'm, I'm, there's nothing that would... You, you'd be happy to be on the machine and never go back to reality again. Or is there something in reality that you would want to go back to? That's not. It can't, like that it can't, but that's this the thing. This is why there's the clause in the contract. If you don't like it, you can come back out. See, I'll have to try it. But I have a feeling that I would want to stay in it. But I'll, I'll try it. And if I don't so like it, then say, I'll choose reality. Let's but say the clause, the clause is removed and you have to. You've had a demo. You've had a demo. Um, and now you have to choose. You can be a machine human or a real human. Oh, I haven't had me demo yet. I'd have to wait until You've I had the demo. Have the demo. Demo's been experience. amazing. It's incredible. It's it's fantastic. All of your dreams came true. It was immensely pleasurable. It was better than anything you've ever taken. Nobody's going to give you a demo of this machine during the podcast. You've had a demo. I'm hopping. I'm hopping in. He's <laughs> hopping in. I'm in. Jeff, what do you I, think? I, I, what would I go in or out with the machine? You've had a demo. Now it's you have to choose. I, I think I would choose life. I don't think I think I would choose to not go into the machine. I think there's too much to what is it about anything. life that would make you want to participate in it? Like people, family and friends, and real experiences. I I think you'd your subconscious would know that. Like if you if every single one of your um demands were met really quickly. It's like to so say in in any relationship, whether it's like a romantic relationship or or if you go into a new job and there's somebody in there and they're pandering to your every need, you get bored so quick and you're like, fuck this, I'm gone. You know what I mean, what I do, you know what I mean? I'd be just straight out of there. Whereas if so if somebody was like if there was no challenge there, no challenge at all and everything was just like a pleasurable thing, I mean, nah, wouldn't be for me. I'd prefer life. The ups and the downs, the highs and the lows. I prefer to like feel pain and feel what it what it is to overcome it. And um, yeah, and and then and rise and have and then that the moments of happiness in your life would actually mean something instead of it just being some neuroreceptor that's attached to your nut. Fuck that. Yeah, give me life all day. Also, if you if you're in this, uh, you know that the hyper real, the hyper heightened uh, realm. It would be more difficult to uh, to create, really, wouldn't it? Because a lot of the time, when we create, we're kind of processing struggles and strife. You know what I mean? So then, maybe the content that you would write in your subconscious would be weaker. Having said that, because you can have everything your own way, the shit content that you're creating would be top of the pops. You know what I mean? But also, you could just be like, I, you know, I want to write something that's better than, you know. Beethoven's ninth, and then yeah. just do it. There's no, there be no challenge to it. You know what I mean? It's no, like, and of course, and then maybe the thing is, it wouldn't actually be better than than, than the ninth. Well, you could co- convince yourself. Yes, yeah. your conscious guiding you. You know, nothing is better than the ninth. Having said that, you know, how, like I mean, I, I probably won't go for it. You know what I mean? But if I was put into it, say someone lumped me in it, they knocked me out and they put me into it, I wouldn't really know. No, initially, you, wouldn't any... you wouldn't know the difference. Really but yeah, what so is it just... about reality? What is it about reality that you would not want to lose? Um, like, like I've had a had a strange enough year, right? With a with my marriage failing, basically at the start of the year, right? And although that was horrendous, and I had to go through a lot of um, kind of shame, guilt, and embarrassment. I'm now coming out of that and I feel like I've really lived through something and I feel better for it, you know, and I'm reading, reading a lot of philosophy and psychology and I feel more equipped 
to go forward with my life because of that hardship. Like that was, that's an extreme hardship. Um, so I would hate to eliminate those struggles and those, those big, big lessons when you have to ask yourself big questions and reflect and grow, you know? I'd hate to eliminate that. Okay, Jeff, what is it about reality that you wouldn't want to give up? Yeah, and similar, like the struggle, you know, that I think that, like, as I said earlier on, happiness, only, happiness isn't a thing that you can strive to. Happiness comes when your life is full of meaning for me, do you know what I mean? Like when, when things are aligned and, and like, I, I think I, like inspiration and creation comes from those times that, that like the highs, but a lot of times from the lows. And like Greg said there, where like when you come through something, you learn so much, so much about yourself and you, you build up resilience also so that you can tackle the next challenge head on. And then like, to be honest with you, I don't know what the fuck I want. You know what I mean? So like, if somebody put me in a machine now and they were like, Here, here's your happiness or here's, here's what you want, then you, you wouldn't get to meet an awful lot of people that, you'd, that have actually made my life happy. You know what I mean? Like, there's so many, so many chance encounters. Like, Emmett, you'd never be in my bloody, you know, machine if this was going on. But I'm glad you're in my life. You know what I mean? Like, like if I hadn't have met you, I wouldn't have been creating a character like you. I'd love to think that my subconscious could make you, but... I don't think even uh, I could go there, <laughs> but, but like so, so you know, those random interactions with people, um, yeah, the, the challenges, the hardships, the things that make life worthwhile. You know what I mean? I think when when you're when you when you're at your lowest, you see your friends and family to, like come around you and and uh, support you, and, and you know what's real. I think that that's it. I think like my life has been a quest for what's true and what's not. And I think going into a machine would just throw that all out the window. I'd prefer to just stay in this life and, and, and continue that search for my own truth. Yeah, it kind of, it would undermine everything that's got you to this point, I think, if yeah. you went into the machine. And that's a, that's a very good point, actually, that your subconscious may not be able to conjure up the surprises that lie in the future. You know, because if you go into the machine, like if I go in now, age 32, into that, the only things I can conjure are what has happened from zero your, to your current experience are you, but you're you're talking about your subconscious but this is a machine so it's more intelligent than you are it has a collective so the, oh, okay, so the machine is actually getting injected with artificial intelligence and, and yeah the, the machine is probably smarter than you are so possibly so i still have to respond to different situations that are being posed yeah that it would it. generate for you but only if it knows that the outcome will be good for you Hmm. But see, then that's still making predictions, and predictions yeah. can be incorrect. You know, you may you may have a ninety nine percent strike rate, but it's a very good that. machine. It's a very good machine. And I, yeah, but I, I think it would also. I mean, any artificial intelligence would work off the person anyway, so it would only be if your experience is up to date. It, it couldn't really predict or presume what you would want later on in life. Hmm. And I'm, an, I'm kind of like complex and eclectic and you know what I mean? I can be introspective, but I can also be a full-blown headbanger. So I think I could uh, override, like the machine might just freak out trying to make decisions. <laughs> I freak so, out from my design, Greg, actually. <laughs> we're going to wrap it up now. So my last oh, question is for Emmett. And uh, since you've decided you're going to be hooked up to the machine, uh, which is fair enough, um, is pleasure, do you think, the only valuable experience that humans have? What do you mean? As in, like, is that the ultimate? Is that the ultimate state? Yeah. Well, look. The thing is, like, you just go with your suffering and all. Like, fair play. Just, I'm gonna be kitted out in Lanzarote or. Lanzarote on a Monday, LA, LA on a Tuesday, and then I'm going to go to Vegas on a Wednesday through to Sunday. So when you're living in a life like that, happiness is all that I care about, and I'll be having it, and I'll be buzzing. I'm not overcomplicating this situation at all. You know what I mean? I'm just buzzing, you know? You're hooked up onto a machine that's that's, that's, can, that's where I go. <laughs> no, but you can spend your whole life looking, looking for the meaning in the life and looking for happiness and doing that, just that and the other. I commend you for it. I'm spending my time 
in me jocks in the middle of fucking Los Angeles with two women either side me and constant food delivery. And that's all it's going to be till the day I die. And then, oh, who knows, Thursday I might wake up and decide to do a gig in the O2 arena because I'm bored. Do you know what I mean? So you figure out the meaning of life. I'm going to be doing that. Emmett, have you been to Lanzarote before? Never. That's why I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> And we'll see if any of us will get anywhere after this whole quarantining stuff. So thanks, guys, for joining me again this week um, and see you all next time.